Good afternoon, everybody. I welcome you all again in the second session of this day sixth of the FDP. Today we have with us uh, Dr. Krishan Kant Sharma. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce uh, you to my colleague, uh, Krishan Kant Sharma. Uh, he will today speak on uh, human gut, a future therapeutic target. I'll briefly read out his academic credentials for you. Dr. Krishan Kant Sharma is a microbiologist, a molecular biologist, and a plant taxonomist also. Though he has not mentioned this in his brief CV, but I know him as a very good plant taxonomist also. He's working as an assistant professor in the Department of Microbiology at Maharshi Dayanand University, Rohtak. Dr. Sharma has completed his uh, postgraduate study and PhD from Delhi University South Campus. He has expertise on the purification of electrochemical structure bi uh, biology, molecular biochemical characterization, and application of fungal and bacterial enzymes, especially the metalloenzymes. These enzymes are actually used for de-inking, deconstruction of hydrolysis of uh, paper waste and agro residues. Uh, he has been working on the role of multi-copper oxidases, uh, that is from Ganoderma leucidium. That's a very uh, well-known uh, bacteriomycetes fungus. Uh, and also from different pathogens like Yersinia enterocolitica. So this is, a, a, again, a human pathogen. Uh, and he was the first person to report the occurrence of lacase in this pathogen. Uh, apart from this, he has published more than 50 research papers. And I should uh, congratulate him for uh, such a rapid pace of uh, publications, uh, which he did uh, very recently. I, I, I have come across many of his very good publications in very uh, renowned uh, acad academic journals. Uh, in the past, uh, he has guided uh, several research scholars on different aspects of Canroma and its medical and industrial applications. He has also successfully completed uh, many of the research projects which have been uh, granted to him uh, from different funding agencies, which include uh, GDP, DHP, GDP, CSAR, and uh, recently ICMR has also granted him a, a huge uh, project, which is a national project, uh, which is in partnership with All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So the results of these uh, recent projects are going to bring uh, new information about a very uh, rare uh, disease that is called uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So we are awaiting the results of that projects. So Dr. Sharma is uh, uh, the name of the, the, I'll read out the title of the project which I was just talking about. It is Effect of Urbanization on Gut Microbiome microbiome and virome in patients with uh, inflammatory bowel disease from North India. He is uh, also a recipient of a Visiting Scientist Award from INSA, that is Indi Indian National Science Academy, New Delhi. With that, uh, I hand over uh, the, uh, the screen to Dr. K.K. Sharma. Dr. K.K. Sharma, please. Yeah. Thank you, Rajiv. Uh, am I audible, Rajiv? Okay. Yeah. First of all, I would like to thank uh, sir, all my uh, Sorry, sir. Your voice is breaking. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, am I audible? Now, is it clear? Uh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank organizers. Uh, Dr. Shriya Naya and uh, Dr. Rajiv. And uh, I would also like to thank Dr. Rajiv again uh, for such a nice and detailed uh, introduction. Uh, he didn't left anything, I think, he didn't left anything for me to say about my work. But uh, let me tell you, uh, today uh, I would be talking about uh, the area where I have started just uh, seven to eight years ago. But uh, I got success in getting a project uh, to work upon uh, uh, area of my interest uh, recently. But uh, 
uh, I am having a past experience of last 20 years on enzymology and recombinant DNA technology, which has helped me in uh, in uh, uh, thinking about uh, gut microbiome and how I could move ahead to find out uh, uh, certain uh, uh, prominent uh, microbes which are responsible for IBD or Crohn's. So. I will start uh, sharing first. Let me sh start sharing my slide. Is it visible? Can you see my slide first? Anyone? Dear participants, can you see my slide? Uh, hello. Uh, uh, right now, we are not uh, able to see you. Uh, just wait. Just wait. I am again fine. Uh, KK, I would uh, suggest uh, keeping a distance with the mic because uh, it is okay. getting a lot of echo. Okay. Voice is very faint and continuously breaking, sir. It might be at your part, I think, uh, participant uh, Jitendra, right? I think. It might be at your part. Let, let. Now is it visible? Yeah, please make it now, can you see my slide? Yeah, I can see your slide. Please oh, make it full okay. screen. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, the topic of uh, today's uh, talk will be uh, human gut or future therapeutic targets. Coming to the, I'll start my lecture uh, by a very uh, interesting quote by Jack Ma, founder of Alibaba, you might be known. Uh, there's no expert of tomorrow. There's only expert of yesterday. It's very true. As we, if we work, then only we'll get experience. Otherwise, uh, just thinking about any uh, uh, new area, we are not going to get any experience. This I have found, I have discovered in my own work that I have started working on that microbiome just uh, six to seven years back. Uh, let me first define gut, what is gut microbiome or uh, gut microbiome. See, uh, there is a difference between people uh, normally they uh, exchange a word between they uh, either sometimes they use gut microbiota, sometimes they use gut microbiome, but there is a very distinct uh, difference between gut microbiota and gut microbiome. Gut microbiota comprises of uh, all the culturable microbiota or flora present in our gut, but if we talk about gut microbiome, it comprises of all culturable and unculturable microbiota uh, which, is, which are present in our gut. Unculturable means those microflora or microbiota which has yet uh, been not cultured. It has not been culturable. The reason behind maybe uh, there, are, there is a co complex uh, environment in, uh, where microbiota are present there are several, several reasons for any uh, microbiota to uh, grow or flourish and to produce certain metabolites. And the metabolites of one uh, microflora, one bacteria, or one organism may be food or some signals to grow or survive, uh, for, uh, survival for other microorganisms. And there is something called succession also. Succession is also there in nature. So, which is not possible in opportunities. Uh, having uh, artificial media. Uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, people from zoology background, I think most of you are from zoology background and botany background, uh, but you might uh, be knowing about petri dishes and uh, we normally culture microflora in uh, petri dishes in agar media, agar base. So sometimes it is a, uh, 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 media doesn't have the optimal composition 
to uh, allow the microflora to be uh, grown or cultured or to divide. So it's a big challenge. And that portion, which is unculturable, is known as metagenome. That portion is the metagenome, which is unculturable. And uh, uh, um, the estimate says that more than 90% of the gut microflora is unculturable. Earlier it was 99.5% unculturable, but a lot of recent effort uh, on culturomics has led to reduce the gap. And now we have 90%, still it is a big gap. And so uh, it's, uh, whatever we know is just a tip of an iceberg and a lot has to be explored. So uh, th there is an opportunity because we know whatever microflora we have, we are still uh, studying those microflora to characterize the microflora, to uh, find out the exact function, define function of the microflora, to define a consortium, uh, to form a prebiotics. So we are, challenged. we are studying with the culturable ones. So you can imagine uh, the amount of opportunity uh, we have uh, to, if we could know this 90%, uh, which is unknown. Uh, a very interesting, uh, another interesting thing I would like to touch, when a child is born, child is born trial without a microflora or microflora in the gut. But depending on the birth route, uh, whether it is cesarean or it is uh, through vaginal uh, route, uh, they acquire the child acquire microflora, and when they they born through uh, vaginal route, they may, they acquire normally some good microflora uh, uh, belonging to formicutes and trioids. But uh, the cesarean, it, it has been reported that the cesarean are less uh, has less good bacteria than one with a vaginal born, a child born with a, uh, uh, from Vaginal root, it is well known. Now, coming to uh, estimates, uh, it says that a uh, number of microbiome uh, is seven times, seven to ten times more than the uh, number of microbiome cell uh, is uh, seven to ten times more than the uh, our, our our somatic and germ cell itself. And we have more than hundred uh, uh, our uh, uh, the microbiome. Total microbiome is uh, more than 100 times than our own genome. So you can imagine that uh, a lot of functions might uh, might have been done uh, by the gut microbiota or gut microbiome. Yeah, KK, uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, KK, can we try this? Like, uh, you, if you rejoin once again, there are chances that we may get rid of this uh, eco because. Uh, there is an eco? Yeah, there's a lot of eco. Uh, can you rejoin the uh, meat again so that uh, we can and, get rid of this? And, and, start, and start again or continue from here, this slide, or start again? From this slide, we will continue, but you again okay. rejoin. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Time, uh, Dr. K. K. Sharma arrives. Like, let me uh, like brief you. We were discussing about very interesting fact that uh, when a child is born, he is born, uh, he or she is born completely sterile, and it is during the course of his lifespan they acquire uh, different microorganisms. So, in his uh, in his presentation, he will be uh, emphasizing on the role of uh, these microorganisms on our own well-being so uh, it's going to be really interesting to learn uh, that how microorganisms are affecting each and every aspect of our life whether may it may be your uh, your built up your uh, uh, your uh, chances of acquiring a disease or your uh, normal well-being so it is all dependent upon uh, the your gut microflora so uh, he uh, been working on a, a ICMR project 
uh, which actually uh, deals with isolation of these uh, microflora from, from the fecal samples of uh, different uh, healthy and uh, ill patients. So wherein he will be comparing uh, and analyzing a kind of microflora which is present in a, in a fecal sample. So um, today he, he will be sharing some of the outputs of the research projects that he's carrying out. So it is going to be very interesting. Please uh, all be uh, connected. Uh, this was, uh, I don't know what technical, uh, we can't imagine like, what kind of technicalities are associated with this eco. Let's hope uh, by the time he comes and rejoins, uh, we have a good technical voice. Yeah, Rajiv. Am I audible now? Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Better. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah. You, it's, it's perfect. Yeah, you can share your slides. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just uh, keeping a distance with the mic because uh, the voice is really loud. That's okay, otherwise the voice is fine. Yeah, now now it's better. Yeah. It's fine. Now it's fine. Uh, yeah. You, you you have to keep uh, your uh, pitch uh, because oh. at the moment it goes up now, so it starts yeah. echoing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Is it fine, Rajiv? Now, just fine now. Yeah, yeah. Please carry on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other slide? Okay. No, not yet. Okay, full time. Okay. Can you see? Uh, not yet, not yet. Okay. Started now. Is it fine? Uh, no, it has gone. Like uh, it was showing for a while, but uh, we got the caption that you are sharing your screen. But uh, later on, it went off. Mm 
Now is it visible? No. Right now it's not visible. How are you? Yes, yes, yes. We got it. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Okay. It is fine. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me resume from the last. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, make it full screen. Yeah. Uh, it's full full screen. It's okay. It's full screen. Yeah. So, uh, what we know about uh, gut microbiome is exactly is actually the tip of the iceberg I, I was talking about, and a lot has to be done. And coming to the next slide, uh, as I told you that uh, only uh, uh, yeah, is it fine? Uh, make it full screen. Yeah, it's full screen only. I kept full screen. Yeah. What about other parts? Uh, can you see full screen? Actually, you scared entire of your screen. So uh, uh, we can, uh, if you make it just shift five, shift F five. Shift F five. Yeah. It's if it's it's if it's full screen only. Okay. Yeah. Well, then uh, I think it, there must be some data. Okay. Carry on. Okay. You, you can see something at least. Huh? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. So, as we were talking about that, 90% uh, uh, of the microbiome is unknown. So there is a lot of opportunity to work upon, and uh, there is a challenge also because uh, if you don't know uh, if it is unknown, uh, then molecular taxonomy is not possible because uh, when you go for blast, the blast cell will not give you uh, the result, uh, exact result, result you want. So. Uh, so there is a, there are a lot of challenges and uh, and uh, in, you need a lot of collaboration with a person from Amherst, Bastard, and uh, computer science people. So I will talk about those portion also in, in the later on. So uh, when uh, there was a paper in uh, 2006 where Gilita has published in computational science, a well-known journal, uh, they found that uh, most of the function. Uh, human function uh, was done by uh, gut microbiome. They, gave, they, do, they did a very good ex experiment where uh, they uh, infected uh, uh, obese mice with uh, the uh, from uh, using a fecal uh, material from the lean mice and vice versa. And they found that uh, the obese mice turned into the lean mice uh, through fecal uh, translation. And uh, they they studied a lot of uh, pathways, metabolic pathway, and uh, and concluded that uh, it, it is a uh, gut is also an organ. It is a forbidden organ because you, you, you may uh, uh, you might have seen that in, when uh, the first human uh, uh, genome draft came, uh, people uh, were thinking that uh, the number of genes will be uh, too large. But surprisingly, uh, very less, just twenty two thousand genes a human possess. Which is very less for uh, such a complex human being with such a, with n number of functions we have, uh, and when uh, they analyzed, they, uh, when they saw uh, the number of uh, gene present in the gut microbiome, they came. Uh, now they uh, they, uh, they uh, realized that most of our function uh, functions are done by the microbiome or the uh, uh, microbiota, bacteria, good bacteria present in our gut. So. It is a really, it is a forbidden organ, and we should work on uh, this particular organ. Uh, coming to uh, uh, our gut, uh, state of our gut, it may be uh, healthy. It may be uh, a condition when we take antibiotic drugs, like non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, we call NSAIDs, for example, daclofenac and aspirin, which are actually painkiller. And they are normally uh, they normally block the Cox pathway, that is uh, cyclooxygenase pathway, and uh, which are responsible for prostaglandin secretions, uh, which blocks the pain. And uh, the abuse of or uh, consistent use of antibiotics and certain drugs like NSAIDs may lead to uh, it may completely wipe out our uh, good and bad both type of microflora, and uh, that may lead to a dysbiotic state. It may lead to dysbiosis, and when uh, when whenever uh, we regain our flora, and uh, that is not uh, we don't get the natural flora which we had acquired in the whole lifetime, 
and let me tell you one more thing that everybody has their own personal personalized uh, microflora and uh, if uh, if the microflora is disturbed it need to be again treated through some mean and normally people they use uh, they take uh, probiotics but uh, i have some reservation with probiotic also because single culture can't uh, help you in regaining the whole natural flora there has to be some consortium so consortia of antibiotics, uh, sorry, consortia of probiotics, uh, which uh, uh, we, we, uh, normally we advocate whenever we talk about. And uh, the, the, this, uh, the, this area where uh, uh, we need to work upon this area where to formulate certain microflora, certain composition of good bacteria, which could help in decreasing bad bacteria or uh, pathobiotes, we normally call it, uh, there is a recent term called for all those uh, bacteria, uh, normally we call it a pathobionts. So there are certain bad bacteria which become, we normally have, we have in our gut both, uh, gut, both uh, good bacteria and bad bacteria, but certain uh, bad bacteria become pathogenic in certain condition and then it leads to a pathobiont state. So uh, this uh, state need to be, uh, need to be, uh, uh, get rid of by taking certain consortia or to certain route like fecal uh, transplantation. Uh, so, uh, fecal transplantation is uh, still, uh, but there are certain challenges with fecal transplantation because if you take a uh, fecal material from uh, some donor, it may lead to other, uh, it may not be acceptable for a uh, uh, certain person because uh, you know that the, uh, we, our personal microflora is governed by our own immunity. Also. So, uh, and uh, uh, in, in uh, immunity, gut immunity, gut environment, uh, our surrounding and food habit. So it may be rejected or it may contain some uh, pathogens because we, uh, as you have already told you that, antibiotics uh, of the microflora are unknown. So there may be some bad bacteria coming in through fecal transplantation. So a lot of work uh, needs to be done. Coming to my next slide. Uh, good bacteria or bad bacteria or pathobiotics. They normally change the gut environment basically, and they are supported by a certain food habit and certain uh, environment. Uh, it may be um, uh, certain uh, uh, like vegetables, uh, fruits, and uh, low fat intake. They may lead to some good bacteria. Otherwise, uh, otherwise. Uh, uh, low uh, vitamin D, iron deficiency, and a lot of things may lead to abuse of antibiotic and may lead to bad bacteria. And overall, these uh, habits, good or bad, may be responsible for, uh, may be responsible for, uh, for our uh, the precise, uh, microflora I'm talking about. Now, another interesting thing uh, I would like to uh, discuss here is uh, uh, there is uh, why we, why uh, we are interested in working on a microbiota or a gut microbiome. What is the need? There are recent reports. Enough data, enough reports are there which says that this uh, forgotten organ has a connectivity or has a link with almost every major organs or every vital organs. For example, you can find gut brain axis, you can find gut skin axis or gut bone axis, gut adipose tissue axis, axis. even if we have found gut liver axis uh, in our model, I will discuss later on, that there is gut heart axis, gut kidney axis, and separately, we had um, uh, also published another article on gut and lungs access in the case of COVID-19. So there is there is access uh, among all the organ and uh, and the gut metabolite produced by the gut microflora. Basically, gut microflora governs uh, so many organs. So let us come to so uh, there are certain molecules uh, which we know that uh, trimethylamine. Uh, in the gut or which uh, via uh, liver may affect the uh, which may via liver transformation may lead to trimethyl amine oxide which is again uh, deleterious to, to heart and which can be further which can further induce a lot of cytokines and uh, for example dnf alpha is one of the cytokines 
and which can helps to uh, uh, and it actually leads to heart failure or heart damage or heart failure uh, so th there is a link between uh, clear cut link between uh, gut metabolites and uh, uh, different organs and I, I, I won't talk about different molecules uh, because it will take a lot of time but you can find uh, uh, about uh, in detail in the paper I had mentioned here in the Alava et al. Uh, my student uh, worked, uh, 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 PhD working with me, and a uh, beautiful uh, review article. Uh, it's a 33 page article with detail about uh, gut and uh, different organ axis. Very detailed. The interesting thing we had found in, in a gut model again that uh, change in gut microbiota uh, uh, is linked uh, with, the, uh, with the synthesis of serotonin. And people earlier thought that serotonin is produced in brain but we what we had found and, and there are reports that uh, more than uh, 70 to 80 percent serotonin is synthesized in gut and then it moves to the brain so uh, and uh, so there's different molecules produced by uh, different microflora uh, it's mentioned in this cartoon picture we have, we have it, it, you will find in detail in that review article i am discussing and there is a connectivity between all these microflora their metabolites and the uh, the functions uh, functionality in the brain so detail you can see that one uh, now uh, uh, the changing microflora can also lead to gut damage itself damage of intestine, either large intestine or small intestine, which can lead to uh, irritable bowel syndrome or inflammatory bowel uh, disease. Uh, for example, uh, ulcerative colitis or uh, Crohn's disease. And uh, I'm working on both recently. I'm, uh, I'm taking care of ulcerative colitis. I'm uh, working on ulcerative colitis from, from North India, where we are looking into how uh, change in lifestyle, how changing food can lead to uh, change in the gut microflora, which eventually leads to uh, a disease like uh, UC. So uh, there, there, there are uh, some uh, reports and there are some preliminary uh, uh, investigation where it shows that uh, that stress and gut microbiota uh, are linked together and they are governed by our lifestyle. You know, nowadays uh, people are in a lot of stress lot of uh, challenges in cities and compared to the rural uh, area and the food style food uh, lifestyle also changes and food habit also changes so we are looking into uh, those aspects in the project which we are dealing with right now uh, you can find another uh, publication our uh, recent publication and we had reported a beautiful written uh, paper a short paper but beautiful written 10 page paper on uh, uh, gut and lung axis and uh, we know that nowadays we know that the spike protein of a virus uh, of a, a, a sars cov 2 virus binds to s2 protein s2 proteins and s2 proteins are more abundant 70 percent s protein is present in uh, on gut and they're, they're soluble uh, there are a lot of soluble uh, s2 protein in our gut so there uh, uh, you will find out that uh, uh, there, there, there are chances of binding of this uh, spike uh, protein of COVID-19 to the S2 in the gut, and the, so that's why a lot of symptom of diarrhea has been reported from COVID-19 patients. So uh, there, there are chances of uh, infection through fecal route. We can't ignore. We can't. Uh, it can't be overruled. Uh, the, uh, the infection to uh, fetal root. So hygiene uh, problem is uh, also involved in this. Uh, and you'll find uh, there are reports in uh, a good uh, journal like uh, uh, Gut uh, and Nature where they have reported, they have confirmed uh, the experiments. Uh, now I will shift to another slide. Uh, here you'll find there are also uh, studies uh, where Gut has a uh, link with uh, uh, heart disease. There are pathways which are linked with heart disease. I talked in the previous slide also, so I will skip this slide. Uh, we have less time. Then a liver cirrhosis or liver cancer. Uh, the change in microflora, uh, if you have a bad bacteria like E. coli, uh, they produce a lot of uh, lipopolysaccharide, LPS, 
uh, which can move through portal vein to the liver tissue to the liver where it can lead to decrease the bile synthesis which are responsible for uh, fat and lipid metabolism so uh, uh, the, 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 and uh, one more thing uh, decrease in uh, good bacteria can lead to decrease in secondary bile acid and secondary bile acids are produced by uh, microflora they by the intervention of gut microflora they are not produced by uh, the liver itself it's very interesting uh, liver produces uh, bile acids or bile which uh, transform into bile acids and those bile acids enter into gut where they are transformed into secondary bile acids and these secondary bile acids helps in lot of a uh, lot of function uh, they, uh, and when uh, the lack of good bacteria when uh, they the the synthesis get uh, lowered or decrease that creates lot of calculated disorders and these uh, bile acids are absorbed in the terminal ileum and whenever we have ibd irritable bile syndrome or irritable bile disease like crohn disease the terminal ileum get uh, uh, narrow, narrowed or constricted or destroyed and the microflora in the terminal ileum changes so it is also linked with the several diseases it there is a cascading of disease due to change in uh, gut microflora uh, and we all know that liver secretion has a lot of deleterious effect so come to the next slide uh, it's uh, just a immunological aspect of what i have talked in the last slide and uh, we know that whenever there is infection and whenever uh the uh, when there the whenever there is impairment in the barrier uh, that barrier and damage in uh, the mucosa this can lead to during gut disease this could lead to the seepage or passage of uh, microflora and lipopolysaccharides through portal when it can move to uh, liver and this can lead to uh, upregulation of uh, macrophages uh because it, uh, and there will be immune exhaustion and that will lead to uh, increase in cytokine and there will be cytokine burst uh, and uh, alpha and uh, interleukin uh, h will be up regulated you will find more uh, amount of more tighter of tnf alpha and interleukin a so it, it leads to uh, um, uh, liver damage and liver cirrhosis so uh, coming to another slide uh, it's a uh, uh, i have mentioned about the liver damage and uh, i'll skip this and uh, that uh, multiple community is linked with the um, uh, other uh, uh, disease like uh, nfld uh, so nfld is uh, um, not is coming up uh, in a greater uh, um, form and lot of people are suffering from uh, non alcoholic fatty liver disease and this is because of Uh, it's known or sort in fatty acid secretion and uh, secondary bile acid secretion from the microbial community so the differential secretion pattern the pattern changes uh, and that leads to non alcoholic uh, non alcoholic sorry fatty liver disease uh, now uh, through certain studies it has been reported that uh, in certain uh, certain uh, disease condition is a uh, 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 the uh, composition of the microflora uh, is totally different and this is one case study where uh, people have reported uh, that certain uh, culture culturable and uncultural bacteria is abundant uh, and it has a positive relation and some of the microflora has a negative relation with uh, certain diseases for example here in for example uh, liver uh, disease so but how to know the composition of this microflora is a big challenge as i already discussed that they are not culturable a lot of cultural mix work need to be improved or improvised and a uh, lot of uh, technique need to be inculcated to make it culturable because the, the, we don't have defined media and defined in defined media you can't culture all the microflora so we can opt for either gut metagenome we can also opt for uh transcriptome we can also go for protein studies so through gut metagenome 
uh, what what actually that me tell you me let me brief uh, brief it uh, in in this technique you don't have to go for crushing uh, micro just take out the total dna community dna by crushing the tissue or by just uh, isolating total dna meta dna from fecal sample so if you want to find out the difference in uh, uh, the microbiome uh, from a uh, disease person to a uh, um, healthy person take a fecal sample from both the uh, person and take and isolate total dna and go for six days dna sequencing using ng using NG, at ng platform uh, because uh, ng is very much uh, suitable so because you are going for assay parallel sequencing uh, you don't have to go for individual sample sequencing it will be costly also so i recommend for ng is using any platform you can use illumina platform or um, oxford sequencing another pore sequencing can be applied here uh, even we have used the uh, illumina platform you can also if you want to find out the functionality that uh, what role these microflora are playing in uh, particular organ like liver or uh, brain or gut or any other tissue any other organ just uh, you can take the biopsy sample or you can sacrifice the animal in animal in the case you are working on animal model and take out total rna make a cdna lab library and go for ng sequencing and you can just uh, by looking through Uh, the differential gene expression studies you can tell which what are the genes which are up regulated what are the genes or mrna which are down regulated so it can tell about the functionality it can tell about the uh, the role of microflora is in whether good or bad uh, with in our or with the certain organs how is there associated with certain disease or, uh, or certain organs so they can confirm through the proteome that is which is set of all the protein present in uh, in the gut or in a particular tissue you can either use uh, maltitoff but nowadays people are using uh, qtoff or you can use uh, uh, use lcnsns uh, and uh, recently people are using um, label free quantitation using um, uh, orbitrap nano lcnsns so it gives massive data and that data can be blasted and with inibrot and you can get uh, the whole information about uh, total proteome present in the gut or in a particular organ you want to see and you can conclude after going to the uh, all these omics tools you can conclude the role microbiome might be having uh, uh, with in, in the particular disease or in a particular uh, control condition so uh, these uh, studies for this study you have to choose certain model and those model can be uh, insect model which has i had to uh, for insect models i have tried to touch in our group has tried tried to establish in insect model because a uh, rat model nowadays uh, is not so easy to work because of lot of a lot of ethical issues uh, human uh, problem, uh, model uh, you can't work because of lot of ethical issues so to screen out first to find out at cellular level what we had to done at cellular level we took uh, helicoverpa armigera a ball bomb a cotton ball bomb you can use a larval uh, uh, a larval stage in a third instar of larva and you can go for specific feeding we had you a senior intercolonic strain 8081 it is a pathogen and uh, which caused diarrhea also and it has been reported from Uh, crone patient and we try to find out the uh, all the cellular changes uh, cellular changes in and the uh, how uh, is the microbiota behave uh, in the uh, gut and how does it change the uh, cytology of the or biochemistry of the gut so uh, what we found that a uh, lot of genes responsible for cytoskeleton uh, uh, synthesis of cytoskeleton protein they found to be down related and uh, it it lead to a lot of uh, oxidative stress also a lot of protein response for ox oxidative stress so glutathione uh, uh, protein was found to be down related and lot of other uh, we got uh, huge information which we had plotted in the form of heat map or you can go for uh, genealogy studies and uh, through blast2go software there is a very interesting tool uh, 
called blocks to go which can be used for proteomic studies or genomics uh, transcriptomic studies and you can define your microflora uh, on the basis of uh, uh, the type of uh, gene present the ontology of the gene or protein uh, it can be differentiated it can be distributed among biological processes or cellular components or molecular functions that you can do or you can also go for these uh, pathological studies look for biochemical studies and uh, look for all the um, SODs and glutathione, uh, other uh, redox enzyme, this can be done. So a lot of things can be done through by using uh, insect model and you can uh, characterize individual microflora or you can make a consortia of good and bad bacteria or good bacteria. We had even tried uh, uh, these microflora along with NSAIDs like painkiller and we found that uh, along with NSAIDs, these microflora are more dangerous or can other way around. These NSAIDs are more deleterious or have more damaging role in the presence of certain gut microflora. So this can be done to study uh, with a particular patient. So to get a personalized data that is needed. So uh, the uh, final, uh, we, we have uh, concluded in that paper where we have talked about insect model and then coming to rat model because ultimately you have to go to some uh, mammalian system or vertebral system and uh, you have to validate your result so uh, for initial validation to rat model uh, instead of taking mice we should take rat because it, has, it is larger and easy to handle and get enough uh, uh, material uh, blood sample in blood serum you need fecal sample you need tissue you need tissue homogenate and uh, these uh, samples are needed for a lot of studies, like you need a uh, serum for uh, uh, ELISA and other biochemical studies, and you need tissue for histopathological studies, whether uh, that is intact or there is uh, some gut damage. You can go for uh, SEM or TEM studies. Uh, sample and tissue homogenates. These can be, these samples are very important for uh, NGS sequencing or any transcriptomics or proteomics works I was talking about in the earlier slides. And uh, it will uh, give you a huge amount of data which need to be uh, handled properly because uh, you need a lot of uh, stat, biostat, and uh, biomass skill to handle those data and to predict uh, uh, the proper uh, phylogeny of uh, micro microbes which uh, will get through these tools. Uh, this is uh, the picture uh, depicts, uh, which we have done in our own lab. It depicts uh, how uh, Yersinia uh, interpretica fed with uh, NSAIDs uh, led to liver damage because it, pass, it passes to liver and it metabolizes the NSAIDs, metabolizes in liver. And uh, uh, we are used here, we are used diclofenac, metabolizes in liver, and uh, the byproducts are more deleterious than. Uh, the, uh, the parent uh, compound and it had led to a lot of uh, damage apoptosis increases and oxidative scale stress increased uh, ER stress increased and caprons increased so a lot of like coagulation factor decreased so you'll uh, get a um, uh, lot of gene ontological studies you get a lot of metabolic data uh, and then uh, predict the functions or the, predict the functionality or the uh, state of a particular organ. Uh, we, we are just mentioning here because of shortage of time and just to focus on certain things. Otherwise, we had worked on, uh, it is unpublished work and we had also worked on uh, gut brain axis and uh, gut heart, heart axis and uh, that uh, you can find later on. It is still unpublished. Uh, this is a histopathological studies after uh, uh, cryo microtomy, uh, and you can see uh, in control uh, the uh, lining or the mucal lining uh, is intact, the mucus is intact, and, and the sub lining is intact. But uh, in the case of other animal where we have given diclofenac and Yersinia, or we have given uh, diclofenac and lactobacillus also, uh, even lactobacillus also could, 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 uh, could uh, uh, help in uh, uh, protecting the gut. And we had, we had concluded that even good bacteria uh, is not good. It depends on the uh, feed condition. It, it, it depends upon 
the type of uh, drugs a particular uh, person is taking it also type, uh, depends on the other microflora present in our gut so uh, even we have there uh, we have to take probiotic with certain cautions uh, at last uh, i would like to talk about uh, what are the therapeutic targets where where uh, we could work to improve the gut microflora it can be improved through nutritional in, in, interventions it can be improved through certain uh, uh, probiotic consortia uh, uh, which a uh, lot of r&d research and development is going on instead of taking monoculture we should look for a certain uh, consortia of good bacteria and then uh, we can uh, take certain antibiotics in certain case to in control condition to and that has to be a specific target but it's not possible nowadays to be because some good bacteria also get uh, destroyed and killed uh, damaged because of antibiotics so uh, comes uh, fecal microbiota uh, transplantation so fmt is a upcoming field where there has to be a donor and a recipient but what we propose that instead of having a donor we could be our own donor and we could preserve like a blood bank like other um, uh, semen bank and other banks we can have a, a fecal bank where we can preserve our fecal sample our own personalized microbiota uh, before antibiotic regime starts and after antibiotic treatment uh, it can be again the micro microbiota can be regained by our own preserved microbiota so this one proposal which i had shared with a couple of people uh, in uh, and and the people had appreciated this that uh, we should have some fecal uh, fecal bank in india and uh, uh, this can help uh, and and this will uh, by doing this you will know, avoid lot of uh, un of um, um, unacceptable and lot of uh, certain microflora which which uh, are uh, Uh, which has negative uh, effect and which are rejected in our gut. So, but before doing uh, this uh, fecal microflora transplantation uh, experiment, uh, we should know about the composition again. The composition for that cultural mix has to be uh, strengthened. The cultural mix uh, uh, need to be further uh, done in larger extent. But nowadays, people what they do, they take a metagenome and just go for blast, and uh, they get a certain microflora to at, at a general level. But we need to characterize it up to ten level, and it's not possible with uh, just uh, by doing metagenomics. So metagenomics and data analysis tool, they, these are future aspect and coming tools where we have to look upon. I would also like to thank uh, in India where we, Dr. Rajiv, myself, we work and we uh, uh, work for capacity building for women uh, and specialist uh, student in our uh, department and uh, nearby area where we have also trained we and we are still training people uh, on uh, probiotics and uh, mushroom cultivation and how to uh, how to synthesize and how to uh, Isolate how to grow mushrooms, how to uh, harvest products like polysaccharides, which has some good effect uh, in um, humans. So a lot of work we are doing under uh, Infrendia, which is in uh, project. So I would like to thank Infrendia project also. And uh, then no work is possible without money, and you need a lot of fund for that. And I would like to acknowledge CSIR New Delhi, ICMR, UGC, UGC, and uh, the chief fist uh, which has been given to our department for their financial support and last but not the least i would also like to thank uh, my research scholars because a lot of work uh, are done by those research scholars and i would like to thank uh, my other student deepthi and shruti she is working on rat model and insect model and uh, my student uh, um, asha she has recently joined and she is working uh, work on Out of few articles and uh, literature, and she is also working on uh, insect model. And a lot of data has been uh, developed by them, and uh, I have presented those data. Yeah. I, I would like to end uh, my today's talk 
by a quote by John Barden, who had got twice Nobel, who has uh, done a shared Nobel Prize in physical science twice. For he's also known for uh, the notion of transistor. Uh, he quote, uh, science is a collaborative effort. The combined result of several people working together is often much more effective than could be that of an individual scientist working alone. And this I had, I believe in uh, the quote, and it's not possible to work alone if you are looking for some big uh, data or you have some high goals. We need to collaborate with people from other uh, stream or other background. So thank you for uh, patience listening. And thank you all, Dr. Rajiv, organizers, and all the participants. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Krishnakant. Uh, uh, it was uh, wonderful uh, listening to you. And though there were some technical hitches uh, for that, uh, we will definitely request uh, Dr. KK to record uh, his version of this talk because this uh, I, I, I can see through the comment box that many of the people have liked it. But at the same time, uh, the initial slides were uh, slightly, we, were, we got a lot of disturbance in the voice. So uh, I will request uh, Dr. Sharma to record uh, his presentation and uh, later on we can share that presentation. And uh, uh, I, should, I should say this, that uh, definitely the importance of the gut microflora has gained a lot of significance in the coming days and more of research work is required in this direction what uh, Dr. KK has taken up because it is uh, something very challenging which he has taken up both for him and as for his students also. And it requires a lot of hard work, a lot of sampling. Uh, and uh, I wish him all the best that he comes up with some good and excellent results that can contribute to his uh, CV and to the knowledge of uh, our nation also. With that, uh, I thank all the participants for uh, uh, bearing with the poor audio quality and also uh, uh, to be with us today. Uh, I uh, will end the technical session here and I look forward to see you for the final day of your FDP. And meanwhile, uh, you will be given a small assignment uh, today. Maybe uh, if Shreya is here, uh, she can uh, explain you more about that. But briefly, let me tell you that there is a small assignment which is to be done by all the participants. In this, uh, they will be asked to answer or uh, two questions uh, of their choice. Uh, we will be sharing uh, the document very soon with you. And it is mandatory for each one of you to reply back or to submit the document through the email. Uh, that will qualify you for the FDP certificate. So I look forward to see you you in huge numbers tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day. And uh, the, although there are two talks, but they will be uh, slightly narrowed down. Uh, we will try that we finish, uh, uh, we finish the valedictory as soon as possible uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow I, I will see you again. Uh, till then, good night, uh, good evening. And thank you, Dr. KK, once again thank for you. being with us and sharing thank your you. thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.